Sam Blogger, who facilitates professional development online. She uses brain-friendly techniques to help students and teachers around the world. She designs educational materials and runs teacher training courses. Her work is the result of much research into psychology of learning, as well as hands-on experience with multimedia technology. She blogs and runs courses online and runs her own website. She is also joint web editor for the ILTEFL <coughs> Learning Technology Special Interest Group. Now, could we all give her a warm... And I'm very proud to be speaking with Rakesh because he's someone who's worked I've admired for a long time. And he writes poetry that inspires a lot of what I do, even though my work seems so different, uh, working with technology on the internet. And he recently uh, wrote a haiku poem that kind of symbolizes my philosophy uh, with regard to education and technology and teaching. Uh, that poem was, uh, you, need, you have to be old fashioned to be innovative or something like that. I'm not sure if I got the 17 syllables right. But that's the whole point. Uh, we want to be innovative and we get excited about technology, but it's all meaningless if the technology doesn't help us to do something new that's never been done before or doesn't help our students to uh, move forward with their own learning and go beyond what we can do for them. So today, I'm, okay, it's Christmas time and the topic is friendship. So I'm really going to talk about how we can help our students to uh, learn in more fun and meaningful ways socially together through friendship so that they not only acquire more English language when they're learning, but they become better people and happier with themselves and each other. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, so a, a good question is, what positive message can teachers really share at Christmas? Uh, because sometimes it might feel corny or cliched to keep repeating happy thoughts and uh, Christmas cards and Christmas songs the same thing every year. And uh, then when you see what's going on in the world, we might feel a bit disillusioned or empty and wonder if we really can help our students. Because on one side, we talk about love, peace, and all of that. And some of our students are lucky enough to have love and peace in their lives. And they have safety, and they experience fun, and they have stability in their lives. But many students who come into our classrooms come from violent homes and they're neglected and uh, their experience of life is fear and chaos or they might even have food to eat and then it feels um, difficult for us as teachers to uh, relate to these children and um, talk about love and peace maybe if they even come from more torn areas and things that we're all afraid of right now so uh, I was thinking a lot about this, and what I thought was, no matter what happens to any of us in our lives, wherever we live, in our families or in our societies, or the world at large, that no matter what happens, no matter what we lose or who we lose, we always have our friends. It's the most important thing we can ever have in this life. And the sad thing is that there might be some children who don't have friends, people who don't have friends, or people who don't know how to appreciate their friendships or cultivate their friendships. And as teachers, educators, community, society, families, and children and learners, uh, we all need to appreciate this. And I think that's something to celebrate at Christmas. <laughs> so, that's the... My, my message is that we have to encourage our students to keep their dreams and to develop their dreams with their friendships and that they will be powerful no matter where they come from or what difficulties they have in their lives or their families. Okay, so um, we could say that in a world where love is paralyzed by fear, friendship is our one guiding light. And I've kind of, I've put in a phrase from William Butler Yeats. So you might recognize these lines from a poem. 
uh, the clocks of heaven. So some of our students might be like this, that they don't have much, they feel they don't have much to contribute, but they all have dreams, they all have imaginations. So I being poor have only my dreams, I have spread my dreams under your feet. So if they come into our classrooms and maybe they have ideas they want to share, maybe they want to contribute or make friends or do well in school but they're afraid, they don't have courage, they don't have confidence and they're afraid of being criticised or somebody won't appreciate their ideas and we can ask ourselves do we tread on the dreams of our students? Maybe we have a programme, we have objectives, a curriculum and when they share an idea or they get excited we might say not now, I don't have time to listen, we have to follow these steps I don't have time for you to tell me what you want to do because you have to follow my programme. So uh, the, I'm going to share ideas of how, how we empower students for them to lead the learning and we allow their dreams <coughs> to grow and grow, okay? So what is the role of friendship in learning? Um, okay, it's very important in life and it's important in learning, but I think that in schools, uh, we think that learning happens in the classroom and friendship happens outside the classroom. And also, when it's outside the classroom, in many schools, nobody knows what's happening. Nobody knows which children are playing, which children are alone, or which children are being bullied. Uh, and they don't think about how that can impact the classroom when you go back in to learn again. So I think that if friendship is not developed inside the classroom, it's not going to develop in the schoolyard either. It's going to create more division and less learning. So to talk about friendship first, uh, you need a sense of self. So some children who come to school from uh, violent homes, broken homes or whatever, who have never developed their personalities properly are already at a disadvantage because they have no sense of self, no confidence, and they won't speak or they won't share, okay? And when they know who they are afterwards, then they can make friends and develop their social self. And we, have, we need to help them to do it help them to share, help them to listen to each other so that they can gain confidence and respect for each other, okay? Now, just teaching language and grammar exercises is not going to help students uh, as people. It's only going to give them some information. And I think our jobs are more important than that. We're not just here to give some information just because we know a language that they don't know. Okay, so I really believe that fun and creativity engages all of our students, the privileged ones, the ones from happy homes, and also the ones who have not been able to develop properly. Uh, this could be small children or teenagers or even adults, and even ourselves as teachers. So, if we want to develop friendship in the classroom, we've got to deal with this, that some of our students have... Uh, love, peace in their lives and some of them don't, they have fear, neglect and violence and the common <coughs> thing in the middle that's going to help everybody is friendship. So I think that because we're English language teachers and we teach communication, through communicative activities we can help them, teach them and guide them to learn through friendship together collaboratively. Okay, so and well, this is kind of something I put together from reading about psychology of learning and friendship and so on. So, um, on our own, we can only learn so much. We really learn with other people. So, learning, learning is a very social phenomenon and it's become more social nowadays because we are wired to the internet as well and because our students can create more and share more. And after school, our students play with each other uh, daily with children all over the country and communicating with each other in groups. And all of that is something that we can help them to do also in English language if we were able to monitor and develop their gaming activities. And this is all contagious, okay? And when students influence each other and we are with them and we're watching what they're doing, uh, the positive feelings that come about influence everybody in a positive way. And the opposite can happen if we do not uh, foster and develop positive communication, then you have bullying outside, uh, lonely children, violent children, and so on. Because social contagion goes both ways, positive influence and negative influence. Uh, I think because 
not all homes are happy and safe, we're the next point of contact for all our students to help them to go in a positive direction. Okay, and in that way, they develop empathy, they become positive members of society and positive citizens of the world, which has an impact on everything. Okay, so what if lessons were designed to enhance friendship, interpersonal intelligence and communication? So our lessons need to be able to facilitate sharing <coughs> and self-expression and listening, not just listening to test recordings, but listening to each other, heart and mind, um, and helping them to collaborate, to be creative, and this brings in social interaction and positive emotions. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to show you today with some ideas uh, with uh, educational technology. Okay, so we can let students define and refine their own friendships in English. Okay, so examples of creativity would be using art stories and comics, videos, podcasts, animation. Uh, for visual learning, using interactive posters to bring together imagery, video, and text. And you'll see examples of word clouds later. And also using text in a social way through blogs, social media, gaming, and memes where they match images with uh, text and messages and infographics. Do any of these things, uh, are you familiar with all of these types of multimedia? Okay. Okay, so here's one idea I got from Facebook, but also from a few years of working with word clouds. Okay, clouds of inspiration. Facebook apps, Wordle and Taxkido. Wordle and Taxkido are the most popular and best ways to make word clouds. Okay, and I've got two examples from Facebook and our own personal learning networks. Okay, so this was created by Effie Zuri, I think. Her name should be on that. How many ways can you use this for storytelling and language learning? Now, this was a Facebook application that I found on WordPress and I, uh, you just uh, log into your Facebook account and it brings up all the words you used on Facebook in the past few months. And uh, my one was really boring because it was all about Digital Ireland. <laughs> I was uh, this um, buzz agent promoter on Facebook. But uh, Evie's was much more interesting. Mm. So you can see that her keyword was everybody, thank you and love. So she's very Good inclusive, uh, sociable person. Okay? Uh, but when I saw that, I was just wondering what students could do with those keywords and how they would fit those words together in their own minds. Um, so can you think of some ideas of what you would do with this? Any ideas? Create a story. Yeah, story. That's the first thing I thought of. Anything else? Diary. A diary, yeah. A poem. Yeah, poem, brilliant. Um, and students could uh, relate, uh, see which words they relate most to as well and then create their own words. So the only thing about this is because it's on Facebook, you mightn't want all your students on Facebook making them, but they can make their own with the other word cloud tools that we have. And they can also yeah. use them to collect up their new vocabulary and then use their new vocabulary to write about friendship or any important topics you want to cover. Okay. Ah, uh, this is another one. This was from Ken Wilson on Facebook. Okay, uh, so his keyword was tag me. And I thought that he had a lot of very interesting keywords that would be good for students. And students are used to seeing text laid out in textbooks and they just have to read it and they never truly interact. But when you've got it all, all mixed up, then they interpret the whole thing any way they want. So in poetry, in stories, maybe on posters, interactive posters, or all different kinds of media. Okay, and not just educational technology. I'm sharing educational technology today, but all of these ideas can be done and used without technology, of course. And uh, they can have role plays. Um, they can make up comic strips. They can make up scenarios, even movie scripts, using the words as inspiration. Now, um, we talked about telling stories. So, 
uh, story bird is a website so they could use those uh, keywords on the word cloud and make up a story using for example story bird which i think is the easiest and most inspiring website because they have lots of artists who uh, give you the art so uh, that's one way you could do it now, uh, here is a more detailed list of ideas. Uh, excuse me for using all the text because I don't like putting lots of text on the presentation. Okay, one idea uh, is to use a meaningful playlist. So you can create a collaborative list of music on a tool called Listly. So because it's Christmas, you can get students to choose Christmas songs that express the true spirit of friendship, love, are the meaning of life and they put them on the list. Now the reason why they can put songs on a list on the internet uh, is because it's a curation tool and it has votes and you can vote for the best song kind of like Eurovision. Okay so then they can choose which is the best song and do more activities um, around the song. Uh, for example using quiz apps. So some apps like TED Ed, that's TED for Education and Ed Puzzle or uh, Club EFL here. All of these tools help you to create quizzes. So students can take um, songs and create quizzes from the songs, okay? And then they can test each other. And then they engage deeply with the song, deeply with the vocabulary, and so on. And then there are more spin off activities they can use with the new words, vocabulary, and ideas, okay? Now, and I'm going to show you all these websites in a moment. Another thing is quote quests. This is where you use an interactive cork board, but you could use a real one as well. Um, that they find their favorite friendship quotes and put them on the board. And when it's full, they describe what the quote means to them and how they can apply it in their lives. And they can also make infographics. Okay, so that infographics are great tools because they force or encourage the students to match images uh, with text, okay? And there's so many different combinations um, instead of just writing down the usual kind of thing. And it's very surprising what your students can come up with. Now, uh, this is the Listly website. So there's a Facebook group of teachers called The Night Shift, and I asked them to uh, share some of their favorite songs about friendship. Uh, there are just two of them. I have, I have all the websites on my laptop. I might go into the internet after the presentation if we have time. But there are just screenshots to make it go faster. And uh, here's where people can vote which songs they like most. Okay. Uh, this is Club EFL where they can make their videos, their quizzes, uh, their, do their blogging. Club EFL has everything to do with student creativity and multimedia. Now, this is the cork board. Okay, so it's very collaborative, so uh, you can get them to put their quotes up there or their ideas or favorite lyrics from a song, uh, anything you think is to do with friendship or Christmas or whatever you happen to be teaching. Okay, so uh, they can put up so many things and there's so many uh, interactive and collaborative, uh, collaborative activities that come from it. Now, this is a, an example of an infographic. Okay, so I told you that students can make infographics. Um, so the infographic tools, like this one called Picture Chart, they allow you to put in your images mixed with text. And that's an example I made with a comic website. Uh, built around phrase and verbs. I just used it as an example to show that students can do all of that stuff also themselves, okay? With photos or comic strips or anything. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with comic websites, but there are many excellent ones. Now, poetry is a big one for me, I think. Uh, so we can warm their hearts and minds with poetry. So let's see what we have. Now, one thing I did a lot on Facebook was uh, working with acrostic poetry. So acrostic poetry is where you have one keyword down, and then they can build up the poem going horizontally across. So um, 
I've had students and teachers all over the world just making poems with words like that. And so if all of you were to write a poem now from this word friend, everybody would have something different to say and it would all be unique to you, okay? Um, and if you collected all your students' poems or put them up somewhere on the blog or one of those cork boards or all around the classroom, you would get to see something from inside your students you can't get when you just ask them questions from a <coughs> textbook. And they learn more about themselves as well and what friendship means to them. And Okay, this is inspired by Rakesh. Okay, so Rakesh created um, a big series of visual poetry cards with Magdalene Terry. And last year I featured that in a workshop in Dublin where all of the teachers took the cards and used them to make up multimedia activities for their students. Okay? Um, anyway, like acrostic poetry, uh, our students are well able to write these poems, even very, very, very young children are able to write these poems. And they creatively engage with the language and teach us more about themselves than we would ever know otherwise. Okay? Now, so the other site I showed you before, Storybird, that does stories, also does poetry. So, when they write their poems, they can also match them up with imagery as well, and all of these can go into little storybooks and poetry books. Now, I, I took this poem out for today's purpose. Proof Rock Haiku. Okay, so Proof Rock was a poem uh, that was about someone who's very, very, very self-conscious mm -hmm. in public. So, some of you might be familiar with that. And this is a poem Rakesh wrote. Crumb star and trot shook the eyes. I've measured out my life with the number of likes. Now, if our students want to talk about friendship, especially upper intermediate students or proficiency or those who have a good command of the language, uh, one thing that <coughs> really plays on the minds of teenagers is the concept of popularity. And now they're all on social networks. And I'm sure that there's a lot of stress and confusion happening with who's popular, who isn't. And if they get obsessed with these uh, social media popularity votes or not. So um, I think this poem would be brilliant for helping students to discuss popularity. They could do it uh, on social media, on discussion boards. Um, they could write little blogs about them. They could make videos about them. So there are lots of things they could do with that. Now, here's some, here are some ideas. Make a video or comic strip about popularity versus individuality. And we can just give them some things to think about, like what is positive popularity and what is negative popularity? What's the price of popularity and does it come at the cost of integrity? Okay? And I think it would run well with posters because they can put up pictures and little uh, messages on text to show a big picture of what it means to be popular or not popular and is it is it bad if you're not popular in whatever sense of the word they might think popular means? And maybe lots of teenagers think popularity means something else, <coughs> okay? Because it's all open to perspective. Um, I, that would help uh, them to socialize more and to think about who they are. And even for adults, the same thing, how, how we live our lives and how we see ourselves in relation to other people. So now, also, I think that when we teach special, well, children and teenagers about friendship or we facilitate their discoveries of what friendship means, and a huge part of it, especially for teenagers, is boys, girls, gender equality, self-expression and friendship. Okay, because I think we can see in the wider society uh, that after primary school, boys and girls separate and then they grow up, get married and there's a big division between male and female. Uh, um, now, this is an exploration on animated video. One, I, I, can't, I have them up here to play if we have time, but this is what it looks like. One is a conversation between two girls about boys. So your girl students could collaborate and make videos about boys talking about their personalities or which boys they like or don't like. This is a conversation about how boys talk about girls. Now, if they made up their own stories and role plays or expressed things going on in their own lives through these stories, 
and shared them, I think um, it could facilitate uh, a lot of uh, thought as to how boys and girls communicate with each other. And I think we should facilitate uh, teaching them that friendship is more important than uh, inequality or <coughs> not being comfortable together in the wider society and having divided gender roles that are are not useful for the modern age and they're not good for families and they're not good for society. Um, so there were the list of ideas and the web, well I had the website so not it. Okay, never mind. There are lists of ideas of things you can do with technology and friendship. Okay? So a lot of stuff going on, just right. Have you got any questions? No? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the end. Yes, I yes, I want to show you the websites, but I have